Hello, this is the Sasebo Typhoon Awareness Training for Fleet Activity Sasebo. We're going to discuss Typhoon Awareness today. And with that, we're going to discuss what is a tropical cyclone. We're going to discuss the life cycle of tropical cyclones. We're also going to discuss the tropical cyclone conditions of readiness and the disaster preparedness aspect of preparing for tropical cyclones in our area and what you can do to be prepared. So first we're going to start off with what is a tropical cyclone. A tropical cyclone is generally a tropical storm that originates in subtropical waters and has organized convection. Um, that means it has a rotation to it and winds um, that are in a circulating motion, uh, usually counterclockwise, um, that's in our hemisphere, um, or clockwise motion if you're in the southern hemisphere. Tropical cyclones are called different names. Uh, here in the Western Pacific, we call them typhoons. In the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific, you call them hurricanes. And in the Indian Ocean, they call them simply cyclones. So this is a good image of a tropical cyclone. You can see it has a really pronounced eye wall and a center. It has, as it gains more strength and motion, the storm gets stronger and has higher winds and it goes from storm damaging winds to storm destructive winds. So the life cycle of tropical cyclones, it starts with a tropical cyclone formation, a tropical disturbance, and then it goes into a tropical depression um, as it's gaining strength with sustained winds of 33 knots or less. And then it'll gain more strength into a tropical storm with sustained winds of 34 knots and, and greater. And then at 64 knots of sustained winds is when it's actually categorized as a typhoon. And that typhoon, as it grows in even greater strength, um, with 130 knots sustained winds or greater at its core, is then categorized as a super typhoon. And these storms are very capable of causing widespread destruction. And um, as these storms track north, they will lose a lot of energy. And um, as they make landfall, they will dissipate. Um, so. Obviously, they will then create a lot of rainfall and um, flooding conditions as, as they make landfall. So what is the tropical cyclone condition of readiness, or TCOR, as we call it? Tropical cyclone condition of readiness, it's, it's a standardized preparedness system that, that we use uh, to prepare for tropical cyclones. So uh, before the storm's arrival and as it's passing through, we use this standardized system so we know exactly how to prepare, respond, and recover from a, from a tropical cyclone. There are several levels of, of TCOR that are all scheduled uh, from the estimated weather forecast of either storm destructive or storm damaging winds. And uh, I'll go through that in, in a couple of slides in greater detail. So what does tropical cyclone and TCOR do for me? Well, what it does is it enhances our preparedness and allows us time to take actions. Um, we can secure all of our loose items. We can make sure that we have the necessary items to prepare uh, before storm arrives. And it also gives awareness of the severity of the storm. Uh, we can broadcast this information and make sure that people understand the dangers and the hazards with each particular storm. So the tropical cycling conditions of readiness, the, the T cores, there's five actual T core levels. Um, and that's if you don't count the storm watch. So I'll start off with tropical cyclone condition of readiness storm watch. And that's where sustained damaging winds, 34 to 49 knots may be experienced. Now we'll use storm watch if a storm is close to our proximity and the winds just aren't high enough to get to a storm destructive level, but they're at a storm damaging level. We're gonna get some weather, we're gonna get some rain, we're gonna get some winds. We use storm watch in those cases. And to make sure people have some heightened vigilance and awareness that there is a storm in our area and to be prepared in the event that if the storm does shift tracks, that we can rapidly escalate into a T-Core 1 situation um, if the storm does shift and we have higher winds. So that's storm watch. Uh, T-Core 5 um, starts off with a forecast where we are expecting destructive winds um, as, as a possibility within 96 hours. And we'll start going through our preparations at T-Core 5. T-Core 4 is the same, destructive winds, um, 50 knots or greater within 72 hours. T-Core 3 is the 48 hour benchmark. And T-Core 2 is 50 knots or greater in 24 hours. And T-Core 2 is where you start seeing non-essential services start to be secured. Um, that's where we make a decision on closing schools. That's where we make a decision on closing food court and different things and what time we're gonna do that. It depends on when the storm's arrival occurs, if it's on a weekend in the middle of the night, or if it's on a weekday in the middle of a business day, 
is when we'll decide on whether uh, we're going to close or keep a service open until the end of the business hours. Um, it, it really depends on, on each storm. T41 is their destructive winds of 50 knots or greater within 12 hours. And this is where you'll see us um, shift from um, non-essential services into emergency essential services and those mission essential services will remain open. And um, that's when your non-essential personnel will go home and or remain home and possibly telework from home or, or respond to directions from their, from their home command or their unit. Um, Decor one caution is where we are actually experiencing and witnessing sustained winds of 34 to 49 knots uh, with frequent gusts of 50 knots or greater. Um, during Decor one caution, this is where only mission essential personnel are allowed on the base and we secure the main gate of Sasebo. And uh, we have very large trees in Sasebo at the main gate area. And that's a, that's a hazard um, with high winds of a tree possibly falling on somebody. So we secure the main gate, but the, and we divert all traffic to the back gate. So the back gate remains open during a T Corps 1 caution. Now the next level is T Corps 1 emergency. And this is the highest level. And this is where we are experiencing sustained winds of 50 knots and greater and frequent gusts of 60 knots and greater. Um, and we secure all uh, gates to the base. We secure all services. We issue an emergency shelter in place order for all personnel. Mission essential personnel are sheltered in place. Non-essential mission essential personnel are sheltered in place. Um, and um, it's just not safe to be outside. So things could be um, breaking loose and flying around and be a possible missile hazard. So for the safety of everybody, uh, you will remain inside during T-Core 1 emergency. For T-Core 1 recovery, um, this is where the storm has passed and the sustained winds have fallen below um, 50 knots and are no longer expected to occur. And um, we will send out um, experts to check the storm for damages and check the, the base for, for any possible hazards, um, fallen power lines, um, any type of hazard that could, that could pose a danger to the public. Um, we will respond to those hazards and, and make sure that the base is safe before we issue the all clear. And then the last level is the all clear, and that's there's no threat of any severe weather, um, and it's not forecast to return. The storm has passed by us, and uh, we have no hazards on the base, and that's when we uh, issue out the all clear. Um, so please uh, be aware of that for the for the T core levels. You know what T core phase that we are in. For our typhoon warnings, you want to follow our inst installation emergency instructions. Um, be aware of current tropical cyclone conditions of, of readiness phases that you're in, and make sure that you secure all your items located outside that could again, pose a missile threat from high winds. This includes your picnic tables, your, your lawn furniture, um, anything that, that you feel it can, can catch, a, uh, can be caught by the wind and, and pushed around the base. And then make sure you have an emergency kit ready. Um, typhoon season kicks off June 1st, so make sure you have a home emergency kit at all times. Um, and we'll go into that in more detail in a couple of slides. So T-Core Stormwatch, we already went through this, uh, but it is a heightened alert status based on the proximity of the storm. Again, um, sometimes the storm is passing by Sasebo, but it's close enough that we're gonna get some winds um, and it still poses a danger and it could, it could shift its track. So we would order a T-Core storm watch in that event. So you still have to be um, very vigilant about what's going on with the, with the storm. Uh, next T-Core phase is T-Core five, and that's destructive winds are possible within 96 hours. And your response to that would be, this is the time when you would be evaluating your preparation, checking your disaster kits at, at home, um, making sure that you have enough food and water and supplies, um, and that you're ready for the, the storm and any potential outages that may come from a, a storm. T-Core 4 is very similar. Um, it's just 72 hours out. And for T-Core 4, um, the response for that would be, you're gonna continue to evaluate your preparation. If anything comes up, make sure you get that done. Um, really take this time to Make sure you have enough food and water set aside um, for a minimum three days, but we always recommend three to seven days. Um, you wanna do that now uh, during T-Core 4. You don't wanna wait um, because as we discussed, um, as we get further into the T-Core levels, uh, non-essential services, commissary, food court, those things will be secured as the, uh, as, as the storm comes through. T-Core 3 is destructive winds are possible within 48 hours. And again, this is where we're getting closer to the storm arriving make sure you put everything away um you know the bikes the grills the the, the lawn toys the, the the tables that you have outside uh, those can all get um picked up by the wind and and can pose a serious threat to people or equipment or even facilities around the base 
T core two is destructive winds within 24 hours. And with T core two, we are getting very close to the storm, uh, 24 hours out. And this is the time where you just go out and just do a, an extra second check, make sure that there's nothing that you haven't overlooked and that uh, everything is secured. T core one, the destructive winds are within 12 hours. Um, at T core one, you may start to see the, the clouds start to get cloudy. You may start to see wind conditions start to pick up. Every, every, every storm is a little different, so make sure you um, look at the and pay attention to the T core one. And you should have already have had all your stuff um, for your disaster kit purchased. Um, but make sure that, um, again, you have games for the kids, you have um, things to keep your family occupied um, during the storm. T core one caution and T core emergency. This is where the storm is actually here. Um, you'll hear alarms, um, giant voice announcements. You, um, this is where you'll also be seeing shelter in place orders given uh, to stay inside. Uh, please do not let your kids go outside and play on playgrounds or do not go outside because there could be some debris flying around in the air. Um, so please uh, stay inside your residence, stay inside your work resident if you're mission essential personnel and wait it out and uh, wait for the, the all clear. For um, other deadly phenomena with typhoons uh, during this TCOR 1 caution, TCOR 1 emergency, when the storm is actually here, you're going to see a possibility of a storm surge, a sudden rise in the water level. It's going to be pushed uh, inland by high winds. Um, so this will um, be strengthened by high tide. So it just depends on when the storm arrives. So just be aware of, of a storm surge. Stay away from the, from the water. Uh, drowning is a leading cause of typhoon-related death um, with typhoons. Uh, also, typhoon spawn tornadoes. Um, there's a lot of secondary effects caused by a tropical cyclone. There's the typhoon spawn tornadoes and downbursts and um, water spouts that, that are created from uh, tropical cyclones. So make sure that, that you uh, stay inside where you're protected from these, these kind of events. Uh, this next slide is just uh, some storm damage that the base has received. Um, this is just an example of one of our piers that got pushed over uh, from just the power of storm surge and uh, high winds back in 2009. The base also um, endured a lot of damage last year in 2018. Um, we had a, a higher than average number of, of strong storms uh, last year, and um, we had a higher than normal average of tropical storms and tropical cyclones just in the Western Pacific last year. So the next uh, T core level is T core one recovery. Destructive winds are no longer forecast to occur. Um, and this is where emergency personnel, um, we're gonna go out, we're gonna do uh, damage assessments and make sure there's no hazards around the base again. Um, and then once it's it's safe and we've addressed and responded to all the dangers and hazards around the base, then we will uh, issue out the all clear. So please do not go outside during Tico 1 recovery. Okay, and then the last level is the all clear. And please wait for the all clear before you go outside. Um, emergency personnel, I mean, we need to make sure everything's safe before you wander um, outside and uh, make sure that no one's going to be hurt by anything that's out there. So um, please wait for the all clear. And then once the all clear is sounded, that's when non-essential services, such as the commissary, the next um, schools, will look at what time um, is um, that the all clear is sounded. Um, so sometimes it may be um, just prudent to start the next day for school or for the food court to open up. It opens up um, sometimes an hour after all clear is sounded. Sometimes it, it could take a while, um, depending on what the situation is and how many you know, time that we sound the all clear. So just be aware of that. We'll post information on Facebook as, as well as other sources on when we're actually opening up services on the base. So please stay tuned for that. Okay, so this is just, uh, just a quick cartoon. Just, you know, are, are you prepared? So please assess your own um, home disaster and emergency kits. Um, and then I'll real quick go through what's, what's in an emergency disaster kit. So first thing is food. You have to have a minimum of three days of supply of lightweight prepackaged food. The next thing in your disaster kit is going to be water. So you want a three-day supply, and the standard is one gallon per person per day. So that's three gallons per person. So make sure you have at least a three-day minimum supply of water. Next in the, next in the disaster kit is our baby supplies. Uh, minimum three-day supply. Make sure you have enough supplies for your babies, as well as um, you want to make sure also in your disaster kit that you have cash. Um, Make sure you have yen, make sure you have U.S. cash. Uh, there may be a power outage or a disruption in financial services as a result of a large storm. So make sure you have cash on hand. Um, the other thing is make sure you have 
food and items for your pets. Um, make sure you have first aid kits in your home disaster kits. Make sure you have a flashlight with some batteries and check your batteries. Uh, small radio is always handy. You can tune into AFN. Uh, duct tape always works great um, for securing items. And then games and books for the kids. If there's power outages, um, games and books will, will work well for uh, taking care of the kids and give them something to do. You can find a lot of our information on our public CNIC public webpage at www.cnic.navy.mil forward slash Sasebo. And you can look under the operations and management section and go to emergency management. There you will find a number of links to FEMA, to disaster checklists, to emergency evacuation packets um, for an, an evacuation preparedness or NEO um, operation. Um, there's also registration for a mass notification system on there as well. Uh, next slide here, we also have our Navy Ready or our Ready Navy website. Um, so Ready Navy is, a, is another link and useful tool that you can use. Uh, they'll have a number of information and checklists for you to reference. And there's links to FEMA as well as um, disaster preparedness uh, programs for the Department of Homeland Security. So on this next slide is how will I know when a typhoon is coming? Well, we have a mass notification system and it's a requirement that all military active reserve civil service contract personnel um, are required to register their their uh, contact information, their office email addresses, their phone numbers at a minimum in our mass notification system. So um, we highly, highly recommend that you register your contact and register your cell phones, your personal email addresses. Um, this will just help spread the emergency notification and you can be informed of what's going on. Um, so with this ad hoc mass notification system, you're going to receive phone calls. Um, you're going to receive uh, updates by AFN radio as well. If you tune to the Thunder Radio, the 1575 uh, AM dial, you'll get the, uh, the update on, on AFN radio. Also, there's AFN television. You'll see scrollers. You'll see uh, information displayed on the AFN television, um, as well as the Commander's Channel um, on Channel 16 and 28. Also, there's uh, our mass warning and notification system. So you'll hear giant voice soundings around the base. You'll also get um, text messages and emails um, sent to you with information about what the danger is and possible response or what to do. Um, and then for personnel that work on base that are on a one net system, we have a computer desktop notification system. And this will um, activate on their screen as they're at work on their computer. So that's what the computer desktop notification does for them. Okay, so that's what we need to do to be prepared for a typhoon. So uh, all I ask is for you to be informed, be involved, and be ready. Um, typhoon season again begins June 1st, and it goes all the way through Halloween to November 1st. And there's, there are many other hazards in Sasebo, um, from earthquakes to volcanoes to um, uh, all the other um, winter storms and different things that, that can come up. So please just make sure that you're informed, and that you're, you have the disaster kits ready for any time. Of, of year, not just typhoon season, but again, um, we want to emphasize that typhoon season is coming and to check your check your kits, check your home disaster kits, make sure you have a disaster kit at, at your work too with a couple bottles of water and some things in there as well. If you have any questions, you can contact the Sasebo Emergency Management Office at 252-2300 and also the link to our emergency management open source webpage is also provided. Uh, you can go there and you can look at current weather information, any other um, issues that, that you may have. Um, and there's a lot of links there that you can get other sources of information and um, checklists to, to work on your disaster preparedness. That concludes my training for today. If you have any questions, again, contact my office. And thank you. And please be ready. Please be informed. And please um, be involved with our, with our preparedness programs. And uh, thank you for your time. And enjoy Sasebo. And uh, be prepared. Thank you.